Hello, today I'd like to talk about the Magic Mountain that I just finished recently. This is my copy here. It's very destroyed. Uh, this is the H.T. Lowe Porter translation, and I understand that the John E. Woods one is considered better, but this is the only one I had. Um, but I got through it all right after about two months of reading. Okay, so this book is about an unassuming young man named Hans Kostorp, and he lives in like the lowlands of Germany, um, up north, and um, he's in the middle of engineering school, and to take a break from his studies, he decides to visit his cousin Joachim Ziemsen, um, who is living at a sanatorium, a hospital out in the country, um, up in the Davos Platz in the, um, the Swiss Alps um, at the south of Germany. So he travels down there um, for an expected three weeks visit and then um, some things happen and he ends up getting sick himself and um, the rest of the book is his time spent there which ends up being seven years. Um, it's a very interesting book, not really um, traditional um, in the sense of plot or anything. I don't know if there is a plot it's more so just um, like his experiences with other characters and patients and um, many ideas and philosophical and life um, observations occur and that is the bulk of the book and um, it's considered one of the most influential of the 20th century for this avant-garde is to it. Um, it has almost a dreamlike sense to it. Um, there's lots of instances where Hans Kostor, the main character, is in a dreamlike state and he experiences um, strange feelings that I didn't know <laughs> someone could put to paper. Um, and credit to Thomas Mann because it, um, although the happenings of the book, the, the plot points of the book are not so significant in, in like, um, extraordinary, like they're not extraordinary. They're, they're still in the ordinary life. Um, for example, like a lot of the scenes are just characters talking over dinner or going on a walk. And so it's, it's nothing extraordinary, but, but through these simple things, he's able to give some of the best, most beautiful prose I've ever read um, and give light to I to strange feelings of nostalgia and reflections of feelings that don't really surface themselves fully, but he can explain it in a character um, and what they're feeling. Um, it's really quite extraordinary. I've never read anything like it. Um, and I think it, it, you do come out like a different person. Um, if you stick through it, it's about 730, 40 pages. Um, but if you stick through it, I think you can learn a lot. Um, and basically there, there, although I said there wasn't any plot, um, there are several things that happen that, you know, after you spend so much time with these characters in ordinary life, they feel like real people. And, um, when you're just with them, you know, if something happens to them, then it changes their perspective. Or if someone leaves and comes back, um, you feel like you're there with them almost. And, um, when, when, <laughs> when some people, um, some characters die, um, it's actually quite shocking because it kind of hits you, um, out of nowhere after you spent like 400 pages with this character or two, and then if something happens or several plot points happen, I don't want to spoil anything because I think so if you're interested, at least you should read it. Although, um, I would recommend not reading it fastly. Um, I don't think you can read it fast. It took me like two and a half months and, um, that's because I wanted to actually, you know, understand it. A lot of times I had to reread a lot of stuff and that might be due to the translation by, H.T. Lowe Porter, um, which has like 
extremely long words, um, long sentence structures reflecting the German. Um, from what I've heard, the John E. Woods is a lot better, but I haven't read that yet. Um, I might in a few years down the line, but um, it, I might not come back to this book for a while just for how dense and um, philosophical it was. But um, yeah, the... The introduction um, sells it as a time novel, which is a very interesting concept. Um, it has a lot of motifs and themes that run throughout. Um, one of them is death, the, the macabre, the, the um, occurrence of death, the reoccurring theme of that. Um, another one is time. Um, so what it means by that is it takes a long time over it takes place over a long period of time but um the scenes are set so that there's not a lot of jumping from one time to another um it's very slow and you can feel the effects of time and i think that's what he's going for um there's like countless conversations and reflections um by hans kostorv about time and its effects and all these things and um it's really quite interesting. I, I can't really explain it without um, having, like, if you haven't read it, then I can't really explain it to you. Um, but at the at the end, um, the ending is pretty good, I'd say. Although it was a little um, disappointing with um, reading about Thomas Mann's life. And um, so he was, he was a humanist, and you can kind of see that he very much takes the side of his own beliefs. Um, which is understandable, but it it kind of like it has like this uh, effect of you know he's obviously trying to give like a message with um, a character. Um, he sides with Sedembrini over Leo Napta, and that's pretty obvious um, and expected if if you know Thomas Mann's life. But um, yeah. I probably won't be reading this for a long time um, if I ever do read it again, but I'm glad I read it. So that's The Magic Mountain.